Hi, everybody. I'm Geraldo Rivera, and behind me is the courthouse in Santa Maria, California, with Michael Jackson, one of the most significant entertainers of the last half, uh, the last half century. One of the most well-known and controversial people in the world is in the fight of his life. If convicted on all 10 counts, which range from child molesting to giving alcohol to a minor, he would face more than 20 years behind bars, the end of his career, and the loss of his three children. Because of a court-imposed gag order, Michael is prohibited from speaking about the case. But because of a recent leak of damning, supposedly secret grand jury transcripts, after a hearing on Tuesday, January 18th, Judge Rodney Melville agreed to allow the defendant to speak in general terms about the allegations against him so unfairly made public by the grand jury leak. So at the end of our interview, Michael will be making a statement about the charges currently pending against him in Judge Melville's court. After investigating the facts and circumstances in this case, I have made no secret of my feelings, however unpopular. It is my constitutionally protected opinion that Michael Jackson is not guilty of these charges, and I've said so often and in no uncertain terms. And I believe that as this case unfolds, many of you will come to agree with me. Before we meet the beleaguered king of pop, we begin at the scene of the alleged crime. Sadly for Michael Jackson, Neverland Ranch, this fantasy world he created back in 1988 to celebrate his vision of himself as a kind of modern-day Peter Pan, has too often been sullied by harsh reality. Twelve years ago, when the King of Pop was performing overseas, this 2,800-acre spread in a remote section of Santa Barbara County was raided for the first time. Since then, law enforcement officials have often come bursting through these lovely gates. Sometimes, the defense argues, they've come just to make a point and perhaps also to make some news. Example, the widely covered December 3rd raid to obtain a sample of Michael's DNA, a sample they obtained without any hoopla at all in private the very next day. In the words of one legal pundit, Neverland has been searched more often than the Pakistan-Afghanistan border. Neverland is as unique as the man who built it, a shrine celebrating an innocent ideal that over the years has been crushed and sullied by allegation, rumor, and innuendo. Now, as the current case against him unfolds, Michael Jackson knows for a certainty that the district attorney will spin every child-friendly attraction, from the statues, to the rides, to the exotic animals, into a kind of malevolent child trap. And this despite the fact that over the years, thousands of mostly inner-city children have enjoyed this place without incident. Yet he knows that what you see in this place, innocence or evil, is in the eye of the beholder. Our interview was conducted at a friend's recording studio on the 19th of January. Here it begins. So how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Gerardo. How are you? Despite whatever goes on in the world, you feel okay? I'm doing very well, thank you. You know, it's wonderful seeing you with the children. That, I think, is the real Michael Jackson that has not been seeing you with your own children, one in diapers, <laughs> the other two toddlers. I don't know how you manage without a nanny. Well, I enjoy taking care of my children myself. It's, it's fun. That's why I had them, so I could take care of them. And uh, it's just it's great relief for me. You know, it's, it's, um, it's pleasure. It keeps me happy and laughing. And they're wonderful, sweet, innocent children. They really are. I, I saw you as kind of the uh, the arbitrator between the Nickelodeon channel and the Disney <laughs> channel there. That was <laughs> yeah, you, you noticed. You get some really difficult problems to solve yes, there. Yes, But you have such a, a kind of a normal life there it's it's sweet to see thank you but well, they, they bring me that you know yeah, tell me tell me what the children mean to you, your own children they mean it's hard to put it in words because they mean everything the way you would explain how your children make you feel i mean they're the world for me i mean i wake up and i'm ready for the day because of them i give them breakfast i change diapers um if they want to read uh, we do a lot of reading we play hide and seek we play blindfold and have a wonderful time with them and you can uh, create a, a, a world that at least begins to seem normal? I mean, they don't know any other world, obviously, but... I, real, I do my best, for sure. So that is obviously a priority to you? Yes, of course. I want to be the best father in the world, of course. Do they know who you are or what you mean to people? Yes, they do. They've been on tours with me and in limousines and among sea of fans. And do they like it? They, yeah, they, they find it exciting. They do. <laughs> they want to get on stage. They, they bug me to go on stage with me. So pretty soon I'm going to take them on with me. And let the, the world see them for the first time. They don't say, Daddy, I want to go home and watch Nickelodeon? <laughs> probably. Probably. They do that too? Yes. So how do you 
do you feel being here in a recording studio again, focusing on the music again? Is it a relief in a sense? Um, it's a great relief because it's what I do, and it's, it's, it makes me feel like I'm totally at home. I'm into my own. This is what I'm here for. And uh, any of the arts like that could be film, music, you know, any type of art. I love it. So when you're being the quote-unquote king of pop, that's when you're most comfortable? Uh, I don't or is know. it very reminiscent of the way my brothers and I <laughs> are together? Yeah. Who's the top dog? Uh, Randy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not what I saw. <laughs> but uh, you trust your family. Of course. And that's, you have to. Is it blood thick in the water thing? What is that? Um, yeah, and family is everything to us. I mean, it's love. It's what we were taught and uh, values and... We're friends at the end of the day, which is important. Other than what the, the, the public or press people say, we're friends. We love each other very much. So is the family still closely knit despite all the kind of tabloid stuff over That's the years? That's sensationalism. How do you deal with that? How do I deal with sensationalism? Yeah, how do you deal with everything in your life being magnified, exaggerated? It's not true. Almost to a grotesque It's like uh, looking stuff. at a fictitious movie because it's, it's fiction. It's like watching science fiction. It's not true. And I know myself. And it's sad when other people have to read those things and they believe it. But Do you it, feel it, like uh, holding a press conference every week and saying, well, this is the rumor du jour. That's not true. <laughs> no, because I know eventually the truth will prevail. And I'm about truth, you know? I've researched it, and I can't find anyone who's been more frivolously sued than you for the most outrageous reasons. Yeah.